أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء المرسلين وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته and thank you for joining us uh, for this session number three of our course Ali six nine zero Quran Arabic level three. After this, we have three more sessions, inshallah. And now, since namaz time is earlier, today and all remaining classes will begin 8 p.m., inshallah. Let's try to start on time so we are done before 9.15. And I'm sure many of you would like to have things after that. So 9.15 is a good time to finish and also do more reading if you want. Okay. First of all, uh, let's begin by reciting Sotul Fatiha for the loss of so many lives in Lebanon. You know, almost 600 people have been killed in the last few days, and the majority of these are Shias, out of which 50 are children, you can imagine. So please join me in reciting Sotul Fatiha for the Salah of this Marumi, and also we pray that only Allah give you know, peace to them and may wisdom prevail in that part of the world. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الشراط المستقيم الشراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المطلوب عليهم ولا الضالين صدق الله any volunteer who can say the dua for us? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma wafiqna lima tuhibbu wa tarda. Wa la takilna ila anfusina tarfata aynin abada. Allahumma shurhli bil Qur'ani sadri. واستعمل بالقرآن بدني ونوري بالقرآن بصري وأتلك, وأت وأتلك بالقرآن لساني وإني علي عليه ما بقيتني فإنه لا حول ولا قوة إلا بك الله سبحانه وتعالى الله سبحانه وتعالى الله سبحانه وتعالى الله سبحانه Okay, it's a dua as we mentioned also last time. So very quickly, the first two lines, try to memorize them. Allahumma fikna lima wa tarda. Allah, give us the and success in doing those things which you love and which you are pleased with. Allah, do not leave to ourselves the blink of an eye. We need Allah at every stage. Nobody on this earth should believe that no, we are independent of your ability, nothing, no. Then, of course, after that is the dua which Imam Ali Islam used to recite after completing the, you know, what, the love of Quran. So it's again a beautiful dua, try to recite and memorize it. Again, uh, this is uh, for the last time. Again, we'll just say quickly that uh, if somebody has any still questions regarding this, uh, nominative and accusative and genitive. So this is the example we gave that now in Quran, for example, you have Nuhun, Nuhun, Nuhin. Also, in, for example, in Quran, we say Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Or for example, say Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Ashadu Anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, that is accusative. Now, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Salli ala Muhammadin. So because before Muhammad there is Allah preposition, he say Allah Muhammadin. So like Nu Muhammad also can be you know, in nominative form, which is uh, Dhamma Tain or Dhamma. It can be an accusative form, which is Patatain, because Al Shadwa Anna Anna Muhammad. Because of Anna becomes accusative. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin. So because before Muhammad is Allah, which is preposition, we say Allah Muhammadin. Okay. So at least keep this in mind. And as then later on, you will see that uh, today, 
this is this uh, three cases of you no know, nominative accusative genitive this is in singular but if you see right that uh, for example this ayat we, we saw in this case for example because this muslimun muslimat muminun muminat all these are sun plural and of course you know you will find that it changes no it's no longer the maternal cosatin for example here inna is accusative so it's muslimina ya sakin fata or in case of feminine uh, feminine masculine mim fat mim uh, alif and at ataka so right so for example here also we saw right that katibun we did this last time katibun katiban katibin this is uh nominative accusative feminine this is singular but when it comes to dual sound dual this katibun to become katiban so you can see that accusative here is represented nominative sorry here is indicated by tumatin here nominative is indicated by alif and nun kasra okay in the dual or katibun so here nominative is indicated by waw sakin nun fata okay so this is nominative now when example, as you said when is it nominative first of all default is nominative anything is you know or on its own default for example your name is muhammad so muhammadun if i said if you write your name muhammad write muhammadun although we say muhammad because we always pose with sakin but you will find that now so always or default is nominative or if it's subject is nominative okay and then of course accusative is if it is an object or if before that there is inna for example in this case because there was inna in the muslimina this becomes no, okay accusative well mu'minin only because of inna okay so that is accusative and then if it is preceded by you know prepositions then it is genitive prepositions or even if, for example if there is a mudaf ilayhi then it is also preposition of genitive for example kitabullah it is kitabun and allah when combine combine two book of allah is a kitabullah so allah has taken kasra because of what uh, is mudaf ilayhi you no know? so that is in singular form but in dual form it is katibaini both accusative and genitive and in plural form is katibina so it when it comes to sound dual and sound plural the nominative and accusative genitive are no longer represented by dummaten kasfatatan kasatan rather that represent by either alif and nun kasra of yasaki nun kasra or alif and nun saka you can, you can see here right or for example uh, or yasaki and nun fata so keep that in mind so katibun no katibain katibain right and then of course when it comes to muannas that means uh, feminine katibatun singular with the muatain of course but then katibatan dual katibatun now keep in mind that now you should know this thing of course uh, but dual is not used that much quran uses dual but not that much so in fact some of the uh, some of the books cover dual at a later age but our textbook which we are using she is covered dual at the same time as plural okay so keep that in mind that uh, but at the same time it's not appearing that much but you should know at least singular and plural always if you already don't know maybe you can check it but uh, at least uh, singular and plural you should know so kati katibatun singular katibatun plural katibatan accusative singular katibataini dual and katibatin plural okay katibatin singular and katibatin again uh, plural and genitive okay so then i've got another slide here which i added this time so for example here it is let us look at this sentence here all the billahi min shaitan these are all quranic verses okay all the billahi min shaitan bismillah wallahu waliyul mu'minin allah is the wali guardian of believers right so allah allah is waliyul mu'minin so wali is a guardian or a friend but in this case is a guardian it, original was mu'minun keep in mind always original the as i said default is always nominative but wali no mean that means wali of the mu'minin it becomes mudaf ilayh like kitabullah baitullah right house of allah so 
And so they'll say, Wali yul mu'minun is Wali yul mu'minin. That's why it's Amiru mu'minin, commander of the faithful. So Wali yul mu'minin, protector of the mu'minin. So Allah is the protector of mu'minin. So here you can see mu'minun became mu'minin because it is mudaf ilayhi, right? And the, the, the sign of mudaf ilayhi, sorry, the sign of uh, nomine, uh, gen genitive is represented by yasaki and nun. And like kasratin, in this case, it's yasakin and nunpata. So the genitive is indicated by yasakin and nunpata. Are you all with me? So it is wallahu wali umin. It is genitive because what? It is mudaf ilay, due to mudaf ilay. It is masculine, muminun is masculine. It is sound plural, okay? Muminun is, mumin is singular. Muminun is plural, of sound plural, okay? Muminin is accusative or genetic. In this case, it's genetic because it is without delay. Then we look at another. An-Nabiyyu awla bil mu'mineen. No. Oh, the Prophet has authority above believers. No. The Prophet is above the believers, right? Keep in mind that now, all our women, that means if Prophet was there today and he decides to take my wealth, or he decides to say, okay, to take, he say, okay, half of your wealth, I'm taking it away. And give somebody he has that authority. Prophet is no awla, is above mu'minin. So an nabi awla bil mu'minin, right? Again, awla bil mu'minin. So ba here is a preposition. So by the position, mu'minin becomes mu'minin because of ba, but because ba also brings out genitive. So this is genitive mu'minin due to preposition because of ba. It is sound again plural. Mu'minin sound plural. Okay, and the genitive is represented by yasakin and nupata. Do you all understand? So, as I said, that usually the nominative is represented by domatein, accusative with fatatein, and genitive with kasatein, that is in singular. When it comes to dual and plural, no, things change. So, that is what we are discussing. Right al munafikin. Right al munafikin, that means. He saw, you, it is, if you, you say somebody that you saw the munafikin, right al munafikin. So raita means you saw. Al munafikin here is an object because what you saw, right? Subject, the, if you saw, you are a subject, and what you saw is an object. So munafikin object. No, object also is always accusative, okay? So this is accusative on account of being object. It is masculine because the singular is munafik, uh, is plural is munafikun is masculine, it is sound plural, okay? And now it is, the accusative is represented by what? Yasakin and Fata, okay? Because, yeah, in this case. Khalaqas Samawati, he created the heavens. Of course, here, here he is Allah, right? Khalaqas Samawati. So Khalaqa is a verb, a Samawat is heavens. Sama is singular, Samawat is plural. Now this is sound plural. No, sound plural, right? For example, as we saw here, right? You can see this is sound plural. Mus Muslimati, Mu'minati, Kanitati. These are sound plural, but this is feminine sound plural, okay? So in this case, Sama, today you'll see, inshallah, as we are going to do the lesson number 17, you'll see that Sama is a feminine. How? Why? Because it's end with Alif and Hamza. Now, this is Samawat, it's plural. The original is Sama, Sin, Mim, Alif, and Hamza. So Sama, Sama, right? Then Alif and Hamza is an indication of feminine. We'll come to it later today, inshallah. We'll, we'll, soon we are going to come to it when we do this in 17. So Samawat is plural of feminine. Allah created the heavens. So in this case, Samawat is object because Allah created is object, okay? Object is accusative. So accusative due to object. It is feminine of sound plural. And represented by what? Represented by, is represented by alif and ta kasra. So usually, uh, accusation will be represented by fata ten or fata. But in this case, alif and ta kasra. Because why? It is feminine sound plural. Tahta abdaini. Tahta is noun, but it behaves like a preposition. No, in, in our lesson, if you see lessons seven and eight when we did the preposition, there are certain nouns which uh, are noun, but they behave like preposition. One of them is tata. 
Another is kulla, for example, right? Fauka. All these are uh, what uh, uh, nouns, but they behave like prepositions. So tahta abdaini, under our two servants. This is Allah is discussing about the two prophets, Nabi Nu and Nabi Lut. Under them were their wives, but they were disobedient. So it says tahta abdaini, under our two servants. So tahta is a behaves like a prepositions. It was Abdan. Abdun is singular. Okay. Abdan is two plural, no, two, two, two servants. But because it is now genitive, because it becomes Abdain. Abdan becomes Abdain is genitive. Okay? So it is genitive due to preposition tahta, and the genitive is represented by Yasakin and Nun Kasra. Tahta Abdain. Okay. So it is dual. In this case, it's not it's a dual. It's a dual, tata abdaini. Okay. So usually, for example, we say, you know, siptan. Siptan means the grandsons of the prophet. That is, that is uh, nominative. Accusative and genital be siptain. No. So siptan means two. So even hasanan. Hasanan means two good. No, Hassan Hussein. So hasanan. So this is in nominative. But in Genitive and accuser is has name. So this is how it comes, right? So Abdain also is two servants. Okay. But Lu Alehim Naba Abne Adam. Now, of course, this is a little uh, uh, what uh, complicated, but I hope that you understand. What Lu means narrate to them. Allah says narrate to them. Alehim. O Prophet, narrate to them, that means to your audience. Naba. Naba means news. Naba Abne Adam. This is from Surah Maida. O Prophet, Narrate to them about the stories of the two sons of Adam, who? Habil and Kalim, right? So, Naba Abn Adam. So, what is here is the word Bani. Ibn is son. Ibnan means two sons. Ibnan. Okay. So, then Ibnan becomes Ibnain. But because it is joined with Adam, Ibn Adam, that extra noon, like Abdain here, you can see this noon. Is drops away, is dropped. No? So it is Abne Adam. So what to alay him? Never Abne Adam. Narrate to them the stories of two sons of Adam, Ibn Adam. Okay. So this is Mudaf Mudafili, sons of Adam. Okay. Ibn Adam. So this Abne Adam, in this case, the the what genitive is represented by just Ya Sakin. It's no longer represented by Kasratain or no, no, it's just by Ya Sakin. This noon disappears, like here, like you know, in this case, it appears when it joins Mudafi like okay. In the same way, Ya Bani Israel. Okay. Ya Bani Israel bin means son. No, Muhammad bin Abdullah, right? Bin means son. And then we say Banun. Banun means the no, sons is poor. Bani is no sons, but in accusative and for example, Ummul Bani. What is Ummul Bani? Mother of sons, right? Ummul Bani. That's how she is known as Ummul Bani. So Ummul Bani is Mudaf Mudaf Ilay. Mother of sons. So Banun becomes Bani. Ummul Bani. Okay. So Ya Bani is right. It's Bani. But Bani, as we said, when, when this, this Mudaf, if, 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 for example, if this uh, Mudaf is joined to Mudaf Ilay, then that Nun disappears. Okay. So it was Ya Banu Banu. Yeah, Banun Israel. Original was Banun Israel, the sons of Israel. But Ya, okay, is uh, is a Munadi. That means uh, Ya of Munadi. That means Nida. Right? So become no, Banun becomes Bani. Okay? It was Bani. Nun is because it is part of Mudaf of Mudafile, Banun Israel. So all the sons of Israel. So again, it is just represented by Ya Sakin alone. Okay. It is accusative due to mudaf after ya nida. No, this is ya nida. So, for example, we say Abu Abdullah, right? Kala Abu Abdullah. Abu Abdullah said, but what we say, Assalamu alaika ya Aba Abdullah. So, that ya brings about, about accusative. Original is Abu Abdullah. Abu Abdullah said, no, but we say, Assalamu alaika ya Aba Abdullah. So, because of ya, that 
nominative changes to accusative. So that's why it was ya banu becomes ya bani because of ya. Inna mubazirina. Again, mubazir is the person who is wasteful, the one who wasting. No? So it was mubazir is plural is mubazirun, like Muslim, Muslimun, mubazirun. Mubazirun becomes mubazirin because of you know, inna. Inna brings about accusative. So it is accusative due to inna, and this is sound plural, represented by yasakin and numfalba. I know it is a little difficult concept, but I hope you understood. Any questions before I go further? Um, Sheikh, you mentioned yes, that yeah. there are certain cases where the only the ya sakin represents the, the dual. Can you just yes. explain uh, how come the noon gets dropped off? Yeah, noon gets dropped because when it, you know what Muda Muda right? Example, Kitabullah. So Kitabullah, in Kitabullah, Kitab is Mudaf and Allah is Mudaf Bilay. So Kitabullah, Mudaf is what is possessed and Mudaf Bilay is the one the possessor. So Kitabullah means Allah is the possessor of the book. Baytullah. But when there is, when for example, this uh, sound plural or sound dual, when they are part of Mudaf, in a Mudaf Bilay uh, phrase, then the noon is dropped out. So it is, for example, Bani Israel. But becomes Bani Israel, noon is dropped out automatically. Okay? They just drop out. In the same way, for example, it is, you know, Ibn Adam becomes Ibn Adam. So when the sound plural or sound dual is part of a mudaf ilay, Construction, mudaf, 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 construction. In that case, the noun will be dropped out. Maybe they don't want to make it too wordy, you know, make it easy on the tongue. Keep in mind that Arabic, for example, Allah says in Quran, Subhanallah, and I might have mentioned this thing earlier. Allah says, you know, Quran li dhikr We have made Quran easy to remember. Is there anyone who will pay heed to it? Quran li dhikri. This appears four times in Quran, in Surah 54. If you see Ayah 17, 22, 32, I think if you see, this is there. That we have made Quran easy to remember. Is there anyone who will pay heed to it? So there is a, a scholar by the name um, Pictol. He's a Quran translator. He was a Christian, the son of a Christian bishop. He was given the responsibility to translate the Quran. When translating the Quran, he became Muslim in the process of translating Quran. Then he added the name Muhammad Muhammad Piktor. You can, you can go to any library or even if you go to any bookstore, for example, if they're selling that Quran, if you go to this ayat in chapter 54, there is a footnote that says that I am English by birth, but I cannot remember simple proverbs, but I remember word by word of Quranic pages, not only just one line, Pages after pages. Now, what is the reason? He is not Arab. He is English. English is mother tongue. But for, for him to memorize the proverbs is difficult. But to memorize the Quranic, not verses, not Quranic passages, pages after pages, without mistake, he says easier. One of the reasons perhaps is that the language Arabic is such that they make things easy on the tongue. Okay. So if you say, for example, what you alayhim nabai ibnayn adam is little heavier than say nabai ibn adam. So that noon is dropped out. In the same way it is banin, but that noon is dropped as a bani israel. You see? Although all the all our life we have been hearing bani israel, bani israel, nice so many times, but now you know the construction, how it came. It was not but bani is, is not a word. There is there is bin or ibn, right? And then there's banun. And you know these Banin, the Ummul Banin, the mother of sons, right? Because she had four sons, Ummul Banin. But here is a Bani Israel. Where did the Nun go? Nun disappeared because that Banin is now part of the Mudaf Ilay construction. Mudaf, Mudaf, Mudaf Ilay. So in that way, Nun is disappeared. Did I, did I explain to you, Aliza? Yes, thank you. Yeah, okay. So you, you'll find other examples, but uh, I'm glad that you asked because I know. 
even last time when I was doing this course, people had this uh, particular difficulty. Okay? So keep this in mind that uh, this is uh, what uh, uh, a very important thing. Okay? As far as the space solution is concerned, just now we can leave it because we're not reached there. So just now, I just wanted to co complete the discussion of what nominative, accusative, and genitive because uh, when I started this course, there was somebody who had joined from Kitchener. I don't see him here today. You know, so somebody had joined here for uh, Kitchener, and then he asked that what was this mudaf uh, mudaf pile. So I said, okay, I'm going to uh, repeat again. So I think I've discussed already now this in detail. Now we go to what uh, lesson on body parts, which also discussed. Okay, so we have completed this thing, uh, and uh, this is a question. Any question on regarding this particular lesson? Lesson number sixteen which we did last week. Okay, so if you don't have any questions, there was a very simple homework which I gave, very, very simple, right? It was an ayat of Quran. I gave you the translation. We asked you to find the ayat, number one. Number two, just highlight the body parts. And then if you know, view their singular or plural, whatever, whatever applies. We are, uh, I think, how many students in this class? We are 11. Only two people submitted the homework. Such a simple thing. You know? So look at this ayat. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem bismillah ma'am. Wa katabna alayhim fiha anna nafsa bin nafsi wal ayna bil ayni wal anfa bil anfi wal uzun Right? Allah says that we in it we have prescribed in this book. You know, in, in the book we have prescribed what? A life for a life. In other words, if somebody kills somebody, no. So the person who has been killed, his relatives have the right to demand the killing of the killer also. He can forgive, but he can demand. It's allowed. As, 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 as a what, uh, retribution, retaliation, it's allowed. So, وَكَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ فِيهَا أَنَّ نَفْسَ بِالنَّفْسِ وَالْعَيْنَ بِالْعَيْنِ Or for example, somebody is fighting with you and gave you a blow, Said that what forbid you know that person who was gun blow he lost his eye, right? So if he's taken to the Islamic court, then the person who lost the eye, he can forgive him, but he has the right to demand that even I'm going to hit him in such a way that he loses his eyes. You no, know? in the same way, for example, nose or ear, right? Or, or tooth, for example, right? A sin that we sin. Well, Jew or Kisas, and of course, we are told that even retaliation of the for wounds, right? There are also retaliation for the wounds. From an tasattaka bihi kafatum no. Yet we will remit it out of charity, there shall be atonement for him. So you can see sometimes you can say, okay, he did this thing, I, I, I'm hurt by that, but I don't want to do the same thing to him. So you can do that, right? Francis? Those who are not judged by what Allah has sent now, it is they who are the wrongdoers. So it was very simple about uh, homework. And even, even then, you can see only two people submitted, which is quite, uh, no, I would say, it, it, it doesn't show good, right? That uh, the, I know we are busy, but then, you know, uh, we have decided to get into this class. If you remember earlier, we had said, right, that you are going to attend all the classes. You can't for emergency. And you are still going to submit the homework. It did not happen. So these are, for example, now I know nafs is not a body part, but because nafs can be a person, for example, in this case, a life, but also can mean a soul. Okay? So nafs is praise in the full soon and unfusun. Sometimes Certain words in Arabic are too plural. For example, kafir is plural. Is what is the plural of kafir? Yeah. 
Anybody? Kuffar. Sorry? Kuffar. Kuffar, yes. And another, another pillar? Kafirin. Kafirun, yeah. So both are, you see, Kafir, Kuffar, and Kafirun. Of course, Kafirin and is in accusative gender form, okay? So Kafir has two plural. In the same way, Nafs is singular, Nufus is plural, and Anfus also is plural. Okay. Ainun, singular. Ainun is plural. Anfun is singular. Unufun is plural. In our book, I know there is some typo there. So if you go to you know, the page where there are these uh, bodily parts are mentioned, so if you open the text, you know, you can see that. Uh, Yeah. On page 50, second, 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 what uh, the table was, no, you see on the right side, nos, anufun, then it says anufun. No, it's not anufun, it's unuf, unufun. Okay. So there should not be fata there. You can see there's a fata on Hamza. That's wrong. It should be dhamma there. Anfun, unufun. Okay. So it is nose and noses, right? And also anafun. Like example, nafs, this also has two plural. Anfun, unufun, anafun. Odunun, adan. Sinun, asnan. Okay? So this was the bodily parts. Okay? Now we just completed the discussion about nominative, accusative, genitive. Question, why there is a fata on the first occurrence of the body part in the words and, and, and then in the second has a kasra sign. Anybody? Can you repeat the question, Shikana? Here, yeah, the question is there down there, in the slide at the bottom. The second word has the harf ajar, the ba for the possession. Very good. Okay. That and the first one? The genitive. Why is the first one fata? The, the object of the sentence? Anybody else? Because of Anna? Awesome. Because of Anna. We just now covered, right? Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Anna. So Anna makes nafsa. And then ma to fajr becomes nafsi. Well, Aina, of course, now this Anna also applies to now Aina. Like, for example, here, see? See this inna. This inna just begins in the beginning of this ayat, in the Muslimin or Muslimat. But because inna, and after that, this wow, this is wow of, of conjugation. Okay, wow of conjugation. So this inna will apply to all this because of wow. So this inna makes this accusative, it makes all this accusative. So in the same way, you know, anna, inna. So here is anna, okay. This anna. Makes it an accusative, not only nafs, but also now this vow, and ayin. So this is also accusative. Wal uzuna is accusative. Was sinna is accusative. Okay. And as, as Aliza said, all these are genitive because of ma. Bil nafsi, no, bil aini, bil anfi, bil sinni. Do you see? So this is because of that. So you should be able to know this thing. And as, as students of Quran, I want you to read the Quran. Keeping in mind these rules we have covered, it's very important. Okay, they try to cover these rules. Try to see that what rules you have covered are they being applied or not. If not, if you find they are not, then ask question why. Why this is different than what we what we have covered? What is the reason? You know, you can either try to find the answer or you can bring in the class and we try to see if you can answer. Okay. So this is uh, I this is the last time I hope I have to do this thing. Because I am dealing with uh, adults, right? All of you are mature people. See all observation in homework. For session two, unfortunately, only two students from a total of 11 submitted the homework. Uh, Alhamdulillah, both, uh, both answered the question correctly, as it was simply finding a verse and identifying the body parts. It was a very simple question. Without exaggeration, doing homework helps in comprehending the lesson well. It gives you hands on experience on numerous aspects of the lesson, especially those which are complex. Right. 
And of course, if you think that if you attend the session alone, definitely it is not going to take you far. I can guarantee you. Arabic is not you know, just a piece of cake. It's not, I can assure you. No. We will quickly forget so many grammatical rules which we are covering every time. Even myself, despite teaching all these lessons for so many years, still I come to the class prepared. I go, I look at the notes, I look at other, other resources, you know, because these are things which we need to remind ourselves. So we really hope to see active participation, so participation for all of you, inshallah, you know, as we continue. Okay. So now we go into lesson 17. Any question regarding lesson 16? So now we come to lesson 17. It's a very important lesson we are coming now. This is now we are coming to masculine and feminine nouns. So you should know that in Arabic, every noun is either a feminine or a masculine. There is no neutral gender. For example, let's say that no, this is a flask. It's not a male nor a female. That's fine in English, right? In Arabic, no. It's either masculine or feminine. There's nothing like neutral. Okay? So how do we know that what is a feminine? Usually, as I said, default is masculine, okay? Any word, for example, you find kitabun, kalamun, right? Book, pen, no. Or, for example, let's say uh, kalamun, kitabun, no. Or uh, just uh, think of any other words, no. Faslun, that means class, no. Faslun. All these are words. So, these words default are all masculine, you should know. Provided there are five signs. If there are five signs in them, then they are feminine. If they are no, these are known as alamat al tanith. That means indication of feminine. You know, that this is indication. That how do we know? Right? So this is it now. In this case, for example, if a noun ends with time or buta or alifa maksura. So keep in mind, there is a leaf, right? A leaf like straight. This is known as a leaf munduda. The straight a leaf, which we know usually, for example, this, this a leaf, you see here, Udunun, right? You see this a leaf? This a leaf is known as a leaf munduda. That means a strong, straight, no, a leaf. Maksura is this one. It's like ya, yeah, but without doors, okay? So, so when, when a word ends with ta marbuta, Alif Maksura or Alif or, or, of Alif with Madda and Hamza. Like as I said earlier, Sama'un. Sama'un. Sama means heaven. But Sama'un is seen, mean, Alif with a Madda and then Hamza. Sama'un. So it is a feminine. Okay? And that's why Sama'wat is feminine. Do you see this thing? So these are the signs these are of masculine and feminine, okay? These are the indication of feminine. So for example, jannatun. It is jannatun, a garden, you can see. It is feminine, why? Because it ends with ta marbuta, you can see. This is ta marbuta, okay? Normal ta, and this is not ta, mar, ta marbuta, okay? So when it ends ta marbuta, it's jannatun. Or izzatun, honor. Izzatun, Izzat, for example, Jannat, right? We say Jannat, for example, we say Izzat, so Izzatun. Izzat, although we say Jannat and Izzat, that is uh, because, you know, the influence of, of Urdu and Gujarati on us or Farsi. In Arabic, it is Jannatun or Jannah. You can't say Jannat. No, there is nothing like Jannat in Arabic. You can't say Jannat. In Arabic, you say, if you pause, you say Jannah, or if you, for example, don't pause and want to say completely, say Jannatun, okay? In the same way, we say izzatun or izza. We don't say izza. For example, the word salat, right? Salat is very popular. That I just now said my salat. Arabic, we can't say salat. It is salatun. That means you know, if you want to say the whole thing, with, you know, or we say salah. In the same way, zakah, not zakat, zakah. Okay? So these are the signs of feminine. 
Then also, if you see, it ends with Alif Amaksura. So Sugra. Sugra is what? Feminine. What is this masculine? Anybody please? Sagir. Sagir, awesome. Sagir is this mascul masculine. Sagir, Kabir, right? A boy's name would be Kabir. A girl's name would be Kubra. A, son, no, a boy's name would be Sagir, right? We have, for example, in uh, here at uh, GTA, we have Molana, who is a resident alien in Hamilton. His name is here, Sagir. You see? So a male's person name is Sagir, right? If it's a woman, we say Sugra. So, for example, Reibat, right? Reiba means occultation, disappear. So we say Reibat is Sugra, Reibat is Kubra, right? Because Reiba is feminine. So if you want to say a Reibat occultation, which is a shorter people say Reibat Sugra, a shorter occultation. Reibat Kubra, that means a longer occultation. You see, that's why it's, we don't say Reibat Sagir. We say, you know, we don't say Reibat, we say Reibat Sugra, Reibat Kubra. Now you know why it is, right? It's because Reibat is feminine. So what describes it should also be feminine. Okay, so Reibat Sugra, Reibat Kubra, okay? Or for example, Bushra. Bushra means good news. Then Quran Bushra. Also, the color, all the color they end with Alif and Hamza. Alif and Hamza, Alif is Manda. So Baida means white. Hamura means red. What is black? Um, Aswad. Aswad is. Okay, but uh, in, in, in the same case, uh, Baida. Amra, what is black? Sauda. Okay, Sauda. Aswad, of course, then comes black also, it's used as masculine, Aswad, no? Or for example, it is used as a tabdeel. We'll come to it later on. So, Baida is white, Amra is black, no, Sauda is, uh, Amra is red, so yeah, is black. So these are all signs of feminine. So if you find in now this kind of signs, it is automatically feminine. Body parts that are in pair. So, for example, in our text on page 50 and 51, we have got, oh no, as you said, about 20, no, 28 or 30, we said, right? Body parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11, right? And then 13. So, 11 and 13, oh, 24 and 48, yeah. So, almost 48 body parts are there. No. So those parts which are in pairs, they are feminine. So for example, unfun, unfun, unfun is north, right? We just now read, unf will be masculine because there's only one nose, right? But here, there are two. Eyes, there are two. Hands, there are two, right? So this will be feminine. Anin is feminine. Yad is feminine. So that's why, for example, Allah says in Quran, Tabbat. It is tabba. Tabba means to get destroyed. But when it is feminine, he said tabbat. For example, kala, he said. Kalat, she said, right? Kalat is with sakin, kalat. So kala, he said. Kalat, she said. So tabbat yada. May the hands of Abu Lahab get destroyed. So because yad is feminine, Allah begins by saying tabbat. He doesn't say tabba. Tabbat. Okay, because it is feminine. So those body parts which are in pairs are feminine. So rijlun, for example, feet, because there are two feet. Yadun, right? It is two hands. Ozunun, ears. Ainun, eyes, right? These are all in uh, what? Uh, in pairs, then they'll be feminine. Otherwise, every other part will be masculine. Okay, keep in mind. Names given to some of the wings, for example, ri. Samoon. Keep in mind that these are given as also what uh, feminine. Names given to fire, for example, Narun, Jahannamu is feminine. Now don't get upset that why is Jahannam feminine? No? Even Jannat is feminine. Okay? If somebody, for example, says to, you know, as argument, or you can see Jahannam is feminine. No? So you can say, but even Jannat is feminine. Okay? So that's not the case. It's just that this is just a, you know, Arabic how it is. So Names given to fire also is feminine. Okay? 
And there are some words which are also feminine. There is no rule. It's just suddenly, just Arabs have been saying that these are feminine. So if you go to page 53, for example, they will give us the example there. Okay. If you go to page 53, there's a table there. Okay. So for example, Sama'un okay, is feminine. Of course, Sama, we know because it only ends with Ali and Amzawad. Nafsun, okay, Nafs, so is feminine. Hamurun, wine, is feminine. Ardun, the whole earth, right? Ardun is feminine. Harbun, war is feminine. Shams, such a huge what, uh, uh, planet, right? Shams, which is such a huge thing, right? Uh, which, is, uh, which is also feminine. Okay? So these are the things they have been conventionally considered as feminine. Now, of course, always keep in mind that in Arabic, whenever there is a rule, there is always exception to the rule. Okay? The Arabic word for exception is, anybody knows what is the Arabic word for exception? Muslim, you have lived in Dubai. What is the Arabic word for exception? I know about Latin, but uh, that, that doesn't mean exception. It just means... Yeah, but what is the Arabic word for the word? word for exception? Exception. Yeah, what is the Arabic word for that? I can't is recall. This now, is this now, okay? Is this now? Is okay, I'll write it down. Yeah, there's always is this now to the rule. Exceptions to the rule. So, for example, Amatun means uncle. Right? Amatun means uncle. Uncle is a man, right? Your father's brother or your mother's brother. But Amatun, in this case, of father's brother, is still what uh, written, it has a time of Buddha, but it is masculine. Olama, right? Alim is singular, who is Olama. Olama, you can see, it ends with Alif, which is Madda, and Hamza. Olama, you see. So Olama, although it has the sign of this feminine, Alif and Hamza here, right? But it is masculine, okay? Fakara, Fakir is singular, this pro is Fakara, okay? Fakara. Okay? So Fakara, is uh, what uh, Fakir is singular and Fakara is poor, which is masculine, but still it is written as Ali uh, and Hamza. Okay, Khalifa, example. No, Mama Ali is Khalifa of Rasulullah. Well, Khalifa to be la fasl. You know, in our Quran, we say that Mama Ali is Khalifa of the Prophet with, without exception, without any gap, with a fasl. No, that means direct Khalifa. Mama Ali is the direct Khalifa. Of Rasulullah, not the fourth Khalifa, right? So Khalifa, although it ends with time or Buddha, but it is also a masculine. Muawiyah, as you know, Malun, right? Is the name of a person which ends with time or Buddha, but still is the name of a man. Okay? So there are exceptions to this thing. So do you see this thing that, again, all Arabic nouns default are masculine, okay? Provided they have those signs. Tamur Buta, Alif Maksura, of Alif followed by Hamza. There can be sometimes exceptions, and we have given the example exceptions there. As well as body parts which are in prayer are also feminine, and names of fire and winds also are in feminine. Any questions? Also, open your text there. Page, no? So, lesson 17. Take one, one question, Sheikh. Uh, when you say ulama, we, uh, it is a ruler of alim. Yes. And it is, uh, it is not, it is masculine. But yes. then alim is also masculine by default because everything is uh, masculine unless uh, the the rules apply. Yeah. So alim is also, uh, of course, alim is uh, masculine. But there could be. A... Say, if you want to say a learned woman, say alima. Okay. You have to put a time on buta, alima. So alim is masculine, but alima. But in this case, it is olama. That means it has the sign of uh, tanis, the sign of uh, femini femininity, which is alif and hamza. But even then, it is masculine. In the same way, fakara, there is a sign of femininity here, alif and hamza, but it is still masculine. So in in describing somebody, a, a group of ulama, there could be also ladies in it, and we would call them ulama only. No, but if, if there was a group, yeah, in, in Arabic, the rule is that if there are so, if there's alim, if only woman is uh, what uh, learned woman, we say alima, 
if they are, for example, uh, more than one, we say animatun, animat. Animat, for example, samawat, animat, okay? Now, but in the group, for example, there are men and women, and if there's only one man who is adim, then it's still say ulama. Thank you. Okay? The rule is that when there is when there is a combination of men and women, then you lose masculine forms. For example, say assalamu alaikum. If I enter in the class, as I do always, and I know that there are sisters also in the class because they registered, I know about it, but still I say assalamu alaikum because there are men. Yeah, if they're all sisters here, if I say assalamu alaikum, grammatical is wrong. I would say assalamu alaikum. Or for example, there's only one sister, I would say assalamu alaikum. Any other questions? So if you go to lesson 17, pages 52 and 53, okay? So we'll cover that. Now we look at the examples which uh, our author has given, okay? So keep in front of you uh, the text, page number 53. So I want Volunteers now. You you read a line. I'm going to start with number one. Okay, you read read that ayat and tell us what is the feminine. Okay, was samaa baneinaha, and the sky we made it. So here sama is feminine. Feminine. Okay. Why? Because you can see it ends with alif and hamza, and this femininity of sama is again indicated in the next word, banaina ha. We have made it. You know, ha represents what? Feminine, right? Who is masculine? Ha is feminine. So, alayhi salam, alayhi salam, right? So you can see, but sama a, sama is feminine, and is uh, what indication we are indicated by alif and hamza, and also banaina ha. You can see Allah has then said, we have made it. That means ha. Ha is there because of the feminine. Yes, Muslim? Sheikh, is it such that only a masculine noun can describe a masculine noun and a feminine can only describe a feminine? Or yes, there's yeah. exceptions? Yeah, come well? to it. yeah, yeah. Okay. The, the description is always yeah. So the adjective of a masculine should be uh, masculine, adjective of feminine should be feminine. Yeah, we'll, we'll come to that also, inshallah. Yes. Yeah, so next one now. Anybody? Can? Next ayat. What is the feminine there and why, why it is feminine? Please, let's all of us do this together. One by one. Okay, start. Al Arda Farashnaha. Bismillah. Yes. What is the feminine? Farashnaha, because it ends with an alif. What is the feminine, first of all? Um, farashnaha. No. Oh, it's what is that, that is just this. Mm. Oh, it's... What is the feminine? Parash. Earth. Earth is feminine. Earth, Earth, yeah. Right? We just now said, if, if you see, just now on the same page, 53, you can see there's a table, right? Yes. Where we said, Sama, Nafsun, Khamrun, Ardun. So Earth is feminine. Okay? Now Allah says, this is the Earth which He has spread out. So because Earth is Feminine, he says, Farash Naha. If, if, if earth was masculine, Allah would say, What? All earth, Farash Nahu. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Okay. So, first of all, you have to find, raise the feminine. The feminine here is earth. Earth is feminine. And now Allah says, Allah has spread out the earth. So, they will spread it. Well, earth will spread it. So, here, it has to be in feminine. Oh, oh, no. Okay. Next one. Wa wa ma wa Nafs okay. is the feminine. Yes. Okay. Nafsin. And then because of that, because of that, Allah says what? Ma sawa. Wa ma sawa. And we have no question it. We have question it, right? Otherwise, it would be oh, nafsi ma sawahu. You see? But because nafs is feminine, Allah says, wa nafsi wa ma sawaha. By the soul and the proportion given to it, or the, the way they have fashioned it, wa ma sawaha. 
So Allah is doing custom by this, no? by the soul and the way it has been proportioned. No? So that ha follows nafs. Okay, because nafs is feminine. Next one. Okay, so what is feminine here? Mm. We're here. Bayda. Bayda, yeah. Bayda is feminine, right? We already did it. Yes. Here earlier, you can see. It. So, because it ends with Alif and Hamza, Bayda is feminine. Of course, Lin Nazin, this is not affected because yes. it is why to beholders. Sometimes, for example, Allah says, that no, sometimes you can see that I see something, you say, this is white. But also, no, to me, this looks as pink, or this looks as uh, color, no, or to, uh, green. Or no. So here it is, it says that it will be white to the Nazarin, to the beholder. That, that means those who see. Mm -hmm. It will be white to those who see. So that will not be affected, whether it is you no know, feminine or masculine, right? For example, it says this is. This is white to those who see, or for example, this is a table to those who see. So that is not affected by the no. Okay. But the word by feminine here is by da, okay, by da and us. Next one. Inna al izzata lillahi jamia. Awesome. So where is the feminine? Uh, izza. Yeah, izza, right. No. Honor or dignity. You know, is that the United Jamin? Very the all honor is with Allah Smart. So real honor is the last month. Sometimes human being is struggling so much to get approval from people that how can I make you happy? You now, how can I do this thing? Uh, I don't want you to, for example, have a problem with your spouses, but sometimes people go out of their way to please their spouse. You know, if if he or she is wrong, you know, you can just say sorry. I know you don't agree with me, but this is not right. Don't go out of your way to please him or her. There is no need. No? Because Allah says, in al the real honor lies with Allah SWT. No? That is, my izzat is not with you that you are pleased with me. No, it is with Allah. So in al lillahi jamin, very good, all honor is with Allah. Even, for example, if there is honor in prophet, in believers, in imam, in, in you and me, it is what Allah has given us. But the, the real honor of Izzat is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep that in mind. No? In the Izzat rilai jamiya. So Izzat here is a family. Yes, next one. Bushraqum al yawm. Bushraqum yawm. So what is the family here? Bushra. Bushra, yeah. Good news. No? Bushraqum yawm. Today is a good news for you this day. Bushraqum yawm. So Bushra is a family. Next one. Yes. Okay. Why I don't see others joining? Kumail, Sister Sabira. Okay. So, Al Jannati Lati Wuidal Muttakun. Right? So, what is performing here, Muslim? Jannah. Jannah. And because of that, what happens? Because of that, what what what, what has happened there in, in that center, in that ayat? It has become what you call the word following has become yeah. No, because if it was if it was not if it was masculine, what would be there? Alladi, alladi asan. Because jannat is feminine, we say alladi. If jannat was masculine, we say jannat alladi, we don't mutakim. No, jannat which has been promised for those who are mutakim. Because jannat is feminine, we say jannat alladi, we don't mutakim. Are you with me? So these are. What uh, examples you can see? We have covered this uh, lesson, and now I want please when you read the Quran, keep this in mind. I do it even today, honestly. Even today I do it. After all these years, when you read the Quran, please read slowly. Even read only one page per day. Okay, but read the translation. Observe all these things which you have covered. The rules. Masculine, feminine, genitive, nominative, well, all those things, see how it is, why it is so. Try to find. And if you find that you do not ask, put in the question. We can answer those questions if you code. Okay. So that is it. And
So these are the examples you can see, right? So sometimes you can just, all nouns in Arabic are either masculine or feminine. There is no neutral gender, okay? Most nouns and adjectives, sifat, are made feminine by simple adding ta marbuta, a ta al marbuta. This is known as ta al marbuta. This is, this is as a feminine marker, alamat al ta'anis, at the end of the noun. So see, for example, khabirun, expert, khabira, expert of woman, katibun, a secretary, katibatun, a secretary, no woman secretary, yahudiyun, a Jew, a Jewish woman, Yahudiya, Kanitun, devout, you know, Kanitatun, devout woman, Mukhlis, you know, Mukhlisatun, Saimun, Saimatun. So a girl cannot say Ramadan, Ana Saim, no. A boy can say Ana Saim, I'm, I'm fasting. A girl would say Ana Saim, okay. Sayyidun, leader. Sayyida is a leader. So now that you are students of this Arabic, I never want to hear from you that you say, my daughter became Balik. You can't say that, okay? Let others say, you should not say. You have to say, my daughter became Baliga last month, not Balik. Because Balik is masculine, okay? My daughter became Baliga last month, for example, or last year. You know, you can't say just Balik. Balik is masculine, Baliga is feminine. Amin is masculine, Amina is feminine, feminine right? Fatim is masculine, Fatima is feminine. Any questions? Is there exceptions to this rule? <laughs> no, there is no exception. As we say that sometimes there are a few exceptions that we gave you the example, right? So no, besides that, no. If you just put time or buta to a masculine, it becomes feminine. Okay. So now we come to simple homework okay here it is okay. first of all because we don't have time you know you can do both the passage in this one also i thought that we'll do this thing in the class but we can do that okay here it is these are verses which are there in our book 52 to 54 right so try we all, all discuss this right we just need sama but now we all discussed so this is done. We did up to here. Uh, okay. Maybe we did up to here. Uh, another. Yeah, you have not done this item number 12. Okay, so. Omatara. So, okay. So this is also done. Okay, so just do homework, this, only this one. Try to find seven verses from the Holy Quran which contain feminine nouns. Highlight those feminine nouns in those verses and write their meanings. Okay? So besides these verses here, these verses contain feminine, right? You try to find others, other seven verses in the Quran. There are many, many verses, of course. You can get even 700. Just seven verses which has feminine nouns. So identify those feminine nouns, highlight them, and also give their meanings. Simple as that. Any questions? Okay. So inshallah. Jake, uh, I have see a question. You. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. There was a table you referenced, uh, table 53 in the textbook, that uh, these, these miscellaneous words um, are feminine. Yes. And there was only about yes. six of them. Is this table actually a lot bigger and there's more, or it's only these six words? There should be more. Okay. Sure, but these are the most popular. Maybe mostly which are used in Quran. No? There may be more. Okay. Another thing uh, I know, uh, it, but just as an active participation, we had said this thing. I don't know if those are, those of you who when you registered, you didn't read this thing, or uh, no, you have all looked it. That as a, you know, as a instructor, I would prefer that we switch on the put on the video. You know, why that is there's some very good reason you don't do that is a different thing. You know, but let's have an active participation, right? Our preference would be that we do this class in person, right? We only started this this bida of what uh, online only after COVID, right? This is a bida of post-COVID, 
Otherwise, before we saw before COVID, we always used to do this in person, right? So let's uh, please uh, make a point that uh, we have a video on if it's possible. Any other questions? So inshallah, see you uh, next Wednesday at 7.55. We can, let's try to start on time so we can finish us on time. And please, uh, without uh, you know, exaggeration, what is happening in uh, what uh, Lebanon is quite scary, right? Many Shias are being affected. There's a lot of destruction. There's a lot of what uh, uh, people are being killed, injured, right? It's a very serious uh, situation. Mm -hmm. The way we would pray for us, somebody who's very dear to us. Let's say, for example, somebody very dear to us, that person has gone through an accident, God forbid, or is sick, how would you pray? Right? In the same way, let us pray for the peace in that area and, and wisdom to prevail and this kind of things to end, inshallah. Yeah. Any questions? Any questions? So we'll take your permission, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you.